Fox News alert. The Republicans are projected to win the House, meaning Nancy Pelosi will no longer be the Speaker of the House. She'll probably be the Italian ambassador. And if she does stick around, Democrats are coming for her crown. The House margin isn't as big as we expected. Republicans will probably have between a, a five and a 10 seat majority and Kevin McCarthy will be Speaker, but we'll be facing some serious rebellions. The Senate is still in play. There was no red wave in the Senate. The only way Republicans win the Senate at this point is if they win Nevada, where Republican Adam Laxalt is ahead by about 23,000 votes. It looks good there, but we still don't know. But that makes me a little nervous since Clark County, meeting Las Vegas, will be counting, they say, for days. So it looks like, again, this comes down to a runoff in Georgia. That'll be in December. Walker and Warnock did not hit 50%. A lot of that has to do with the libertarian candidate you've never heard of. Thank you, Chase Oliver, who ate up 2% of the vote and made it that much harder for either candidate to hit 50. What a spoiler. Ron Johnson was the winner in Wisconsin. Ted Budd was the winner in North Carolina. Rubio won his race in Florida big time. Congratulations. But Dr. Oz lost to John Fetterman by 200,000 votes, by 3%. I did not see that coming. Abortion played a big role in Pennsylvania. It was top of mind for voters, as the press secretary would say. And Republican voters didn't seem to trust Dr. Raz. And after that bruising primary battle, he wasn't able to pull it together. He was a Trump pick, so that hurts. And Mitch McConnell dropped about almost 60 million in Pennsylvania helping Oz. And that hurts, too. The Republican candidate for governor in Pennsylvania got blown out, and that also really hurt Oz. But the people of Pennsylvania, they wanted Fetterman. And they're going to get John Fetterman for six years, if he can make it. And they also got Giselle Fetterman and the stenographer who travels around with the Fetterman and keeps the computer handy for translation. It just tells you the Democrats will vote for anybody and anything. This is basically like us against them now. Republicans and Democrats could both nominate a glass of orange juice and Democrats will still show up. They ran a scam in Pennsylvania too because Fetterman hid his health for months while the media covered for him and early votes poured in and refused to debate Oz until the very last week while he'd already banked thousands of early votes. He deceived the voters and got away with it. This early voting thing, Republicans have to get a handle on. We show up on Election Day and Democrats show up weeks before Election Day, day after day after day. What's the Republican strategy on early voting? I don't know. Do you? I'd like to find out because the Democratic machine in Philly and all over Pennsylvania is grinding out early votes at a crazy clip. And come Election Day, Republicans have a big mountain to climb. Unless we have a game plan for these mail-in ballots and early voting, this is deja vu. J.D. Vance won in Ohio. Congratulations. Trump endorsed him. I like J.D. But McConnell had to plow about $32 million to help J.D. win in a state that Trump won by eight. That money could have gone to Masters in Arizona. Now, Masters, who I also like, didn't raise enough dough. Got outspent by about a billion dollars, a gazillion dollars. I can't keep track, and got defined early by Kelly's money is kind of out there. Now, Arizona's tricky. Republicans have to run independent type guys out there. It's like, it's a McCain state, Maverick state. Cinema does her thing out there. It's weird. Nobody can even define what Kelly believes in, but it works. All we know is that he's an astronaut who has great manners or something. McConnell spent close to $400 million on these Senate candidates. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but that is a lot of money. And we didn't pick up a single seat. So either some of these candidates are garbage or the money's not being well spent. But Trump's sitting on a massive war chest in Mar-a-Lago. Where'd that money go? We don't know. The governor's races were all over the map. Ron DeSantis ran up the score in Florida with a 20-point blowout win. Congratulations. Republicans never win that big in Florida, ever. 
The man is sitting on a pile of political capital and has a ton of momentum. And we'll get more into that later on in the show and what that means for the presidential race. Lee Zeldin in New York came real close in a deep blue state, only lost by a few points. Obama, Biden, Kamala, the Clintons all had to swoop in and save Hochul from an upset. And Zeldin had coattails. Republicans won a bunch of House seats in New York, crime a major issue. Stacey Abrams went down hard in Georgia, and she actually conceded this time. Kemp won by seven points and really outperformed Herschel Walker, which is going to be a big problem in the runoff. Stacey can now go back to writing erotic novels and go teach at Harvard with Brian Stelter and then run again in 2026. And Beto O'Rourke lost for the third consecutive time. He's now lost a presidential primary, a Senate race, and a governor's race. He's running out of offices to run for. And between Abrams and O'Rourke, Democrats have burned nearly $200 million. It's a lot of cheese. And that brings us to Kerry Lake, who was in a nail-biter in Arizona. There was some shenanigans in Maricopa County or incompetence, we don't even know. 20% of voting stations in that county had machines that ran out of ink. Katie Hobbs is the Secretary of State in Arizona. She's in charge of elections. And there was an ink shortage in Maricopa County, the county that decides the race. And they were short ink the day most Republicans vote, election day. Where'd you hide the ink, Katie? I'm just kidding, I'm sure it was an honest mistake. Now, Lake's down just 4,000 votes, but there's tons more to come in, and it's basically a dead heat, but most people think Lake's going to pull this out. Now, the exit polls tell us a lot about what happened last night. Republicans are making major inroads with blacks and Latinos and are doing even better with men, suburban women, and the working class. And that's nothing to sneeze at. So long term, this is fantastic news for the Republican Party. But Democrats are dominating the cities. I mean, absolute dominations, 85 to 15 types of spreads. Also, single women are breaking for Democrats by 30 points. And this makes sense when you think about how Democrat policies are designed to keep women single. But once women get married, they vote Republican. Married women, married men go for Republicans by double digits. But single women and voters under 40 have been captured by Democrats. So we need these ladies to get married. And it's time to fall in love and just settle down. Guys, go put a ring on it. And abortion is really driving turnout. In some cases, it drove turnout more than inflation. So Republicans have to figure out if they're for a total abortion ban or if they're for legalization in the first trimester. But back to the women. They're also teaching our children in schools. So you have hardcore Democrat females in school with your kids for eight hours a day. We've seen the videos. We've showed you what they teach in those classrooms, too. So there's a brainwashing pipeline that runs through women and children, and it's starting to show up on Election Day. Now, looking ahead in the next two cycles, the Democrats' luck is probably going to run out. They're defending an insane amount of Senate seats. And a lot of them are in red states like Mo Montana, Ohio. So this little run that they're on in the Senate, not going to last forever. The Democrats lost the House, and the path is open for them to lose the Senate. So is Joe Biden running again? My intention is that I run again. What in the next two years do you intend to do differently uh, to change people's uh, opinion of the direction of the country, particularly as you contemplate a run for president in 2024? Nothing. So Joe Biden learned nothing from last night. 75% of the country says we're on the wrong track, but he's not going to change a thing. Even CNN says that's insulting. You have 75% of the country saying that we're headed in the wrong direction. He said he, he just wouldn't do anything different because, of course, our achievements take a long time to be recognized. That's insulting people. And, and I don't think... That was a good answer from the president. And it looks like Donald Trump's announcing next week, so it's shaping up to be another rematch. Does Trump win? I hope so. I love the guy. And a week ago, I would have said slam dunk. But after how last night shook out, I don't know now. Democrats will walk over hot coals to vote against Trump, but will Republicans do that to vote against Joe Biden? Joe Biden isn't the Clintons. He's not Obama. He doesn't bring out the type of passion and anger the way these other Democrats have done. 
Republicans just see him as this incompetent, lazy old joke. So there's not a lot of emotions going on with Joe. But there are around the country tonight, and you can't really characterize how this midterm went. All these races were different. All these candidates were different. But we need to run every election like Florida, don't we? We found out who won early that night. The vote's secure. We have confidence in it. And we don't have to wait days to find out who won, which makes people suspicious, and it particularly annoys me. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.